Hey guys, it's Thomas from Josh's Frog. If you missed it, check out part one of this two-part video series. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All right, now that we have our leaf litter down, um, we're gonna start adding the plants. And this is where the live things finally start coming in and make this a bioactive tank. Um, so we're gonna grab some of these plants down. Um, now, what I usually do is I'll actually take the plant um, and rinse off the soil, um, sort of gently shake it in the trash, get the big clumps off, and then rinse the rest off the roots. Um, so I'm gonna do that with you real quick, and then we'll be right back to tank. So now we're going to gently get these guys out of here and tap off this dirt. Um, you don't want to be too vigorous with it, but getting the majority of it off is good. And then we're going to turn our water on and rinse off the roots. Now with some of them, you'll find a big bundle of roots, and I usually leave those guys in there. Um, we're just getting as much of that soil out as possible just to make sure that we don't um, have extra stuff going in there. But the bundles of roots are usually fine to put in there. Of course, I get the most root on the one up there. All right, now that we have our roots all rinsed off, we're gonna start planting. Um, so I may have gotten a little too many plants for this tank, but that's all right, because we can always trim them back. Um, so what I usually do is I will actually um, separate the sphagnum moss, make a little hole in there, and then dig down into this ABG and place the roots right down in your hole. And then bring the sphagnum moss back over. Now you want to make sure that you're not getting any of the ABG up on top of the sphagnum moss because again we're trying to separate the frogs from the ABG. Alright, so we're going to do that with the same with the other guys. Now these guys, you can usually plant plants just about anywhere that you um, want to throw them in. So I usually haphazardly throw them in. Um, the only ones that you really want to watch are the ones that have um, sensitivities to light. So either they need more light or less light and you can usually accommodate those with a background. Um, so you can definitely be putting backgrounds on these guys before the substrate layer. Um, it's very important that you do it before because you're gonna be moving the tank all around when you do that. All right, so I've got those three in there. Um, now I'm gonna actually add a little bit of moss and a brom because this one is going to be for uh, thumbnails. Um, now the larger species, the bromeliads, aren't really going to do too much, so you're looking for more plants with really sturdy leaves and um, ones that really grow everywhere. Uh, so let's get the brom out. Now with bromeliads, you want to make sure that you don't bury them above their root line. Um, so you're going to get them with a stem, and sometimes the stem will be an inch long, sometimes it'll be fairly short. Um, basically as long as that stem is rooted in or put into cork or in a background um, and then you fill this brom with water every day then you're perfectly golden so we're going to put this guy over in the corner uh, it'll give him a little bit more stability until he starts rooting in and again you want to make sure that none of the green leaves are under the sphagnum moss because you want those to stay dry on the outside um, then we're going to put in some mood moss now mood moss um, this is live mood moss, and it does need a little bit more light than some of the other plants. Um, so if you have low lighting, you might not want to get mood moss, or you're going to want to get a higher light to put on it. Or you can even just raise it with your background and um, put it up towards the light, and that usually does the trick. So I'll just toss a little bit over here. I usually try to make a little bit of a bed for it nestle it in there. Um, it's got all of its root system right where it is, uh, so other than nesting it in there, it's perfectly fine. I'd like to start it off in corners, that way it can grow out. So 
put some over here next to the bromeliad. There we go. And now we have a fully planted tank. Um, when you're starting with small plants, you have to remember it does take them a while to root in. Um, so you don't want to throw your frogs in right away. Um, so next we're actually going to put our springtails in. And those guys are going to help us clean up all of the excess debris from the frogs, which most people call poop. All right, so now we're going on to the springtails. With the springtails, um, you're going to be getting a springtail culture. Um, now these guys are just started, so a lot of times you want to get this a month or two in advance, just to let them get going and get a lot more springtails in there. Um, if you do it right away, it's perfectly fine. You can still add springtails from there, just not going to be quite as many. Um, the other thing that I usually suggest to people is starting a mother culture outside the tank. Um, now these mother cultures are really easy to take care of. Basically, it's one minute of work a week. Um, so you're basically just sprinkling on food, checking the water level, making sure that there's water in there, and then you're golden. Um, so extremely easy to take care of, and it is definitely useful in the future whenever you want to add springtails. Um, that way you're not having to buy culture after culture after culture. I'm going to take the lid off now, and then we're going to add some RO water um, to make sure that we can get these guys out. And... Alright, so we're going to grab the RO water, and we're going to add until it's about an inch from the top. Now that we've got our water in there, um, these springtails will actually float on top of the water. Um, so putting them into the vivarium is fairly easy. Basically, if you just take two fingers and make sure that none of the um, charcoal gets down into the vivarium, um, while making sure that the springtail can float around your fingers, then you just add that water in. All right, put the top back on. Now when you're storing springtails, make sure you never tighten the top down completely because it will um, suffocate the springtails. Isopods are another wonderful addition to your vivarium. They help you clean up all of the extra debris that are breaking down in your tank. And now for the last and one of the most important parts of setting up a vivarium is really time. Um, so we've added the springtails, we've added the plants, now we have to let them all settle in. Um, the plants, they need to get rooted in, that way when a frog jumps on them, it's not tipping them over and um, harming, harming them at all. Um, and then also the springtails need to build up their colony before the frogs get in there, because the frogs will eat them. Um, so making sure that we give it enough time, um, usually I suggest between one to two months to let it all grow in. If you have a bigger tank, um, it might take a little bit longer depending on how many plants you get in there um, and how you want it to look at the end. All right, so before you add your animals, um, after waiting that month period or two, um, you're going to want to check your different um, systems in your tank to make sure that they are all working properly. So making sure that your plants are rooted in, you can usually pull them up. Um, if they're like these ones, obviously we just put them in and you can see the roots coming out. A well-cycled tank would not have those roots coming out, they would be rooted in. Um, and it'd be a much, difficult, much more difficult to move those plants around. Um, the other thing that you want to look for are your springtails. And right down in here is generally where you'll find a lot of your springtails at the um, sphagnum and ABG line. Um, another place that you can look for springtails is right down here in the drainage layer. Um, that's one of the places that they breed and one of the um, best locations to find them. Um, so if you have both of those going on, you have well-rooted plants and you have springtails throughout your tank, then you're ready for frogs. Um, with the frogs, as long as that tank has been maintained at above 80% humidity and uh, between 72 to 78 degrees, um, you're ready to throw them in right now. Um, so one thing that you can do to make sure that you maintain that humidity and heat is to have a glass top that goes fully over the top. That helps you keep in your humidity, which I have that right here is my last piece. Thank you for joining us here at Josh's Frogs, um, here in the Dart Frog Breeding Room. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and also, if you have any questions, you can email us at info at joshesfrogs.com.